Watching today's winners and losers on Wall Street with our financial expert Rob Black, and then we keep looking for positive signs in the U.S. economy. We may have found one with consumer spending. Yeah, it hit a nearly six-year high, Impressive. which again comes means we're out of the recession. Consumer spending hitting almost $100 a day, um, $98 a day. That's good. That helps drive our economy. You can do the math there. That means the average person spending about $36,000 a year. Um, this isn't like the type of number to jump up and down on, but again, it's showing you that the economy is working better than it has in the last six years. It's just one data point. It doesn't show you profitability. It doesn't show you, um, you know, grosses. It just shows you that people are out there spending. Um, and again, it was a long Memorial Day weekend. It was a good weekend to pull off the higher spending. So yeah. I've been doing my part, that's for sure. So we all have, haven't we? But consumer spending, pretty, I mean, isn't it two thirds of the U.S. economy, right? Is consumer spending. It's a pretty incredible number. Sometimes it's as much as 80%, right? 70 to 80%. It's an incredible number. Uh, we're talking about minimum wage and it's been in the news for weeks and uh, San Francisco trying to boost theirs again. Uh, Seattle moving forward. Yeah, and they beat San Francisco, which I kind of find surprising. <laughs> um, the state of Washington has the highest minimum wage already at $9.32 an hour. So it's a little bit easier for the city of Seattle to do this. If you factor it out, um, $15 minimum wage, it's going to be you know blown into uh, full legal uh, force over the next few years. It's not instantaneous. But that means you work at Starbucks or you work at McDonald's or Domino's and you'll make about $31,000 a year. Um, there will be some exclusions for teenagers, but we'll start seeing the data points. Does this hurt corporate profitability? Does the city go bankrupt? We'll start seeing things that other cities like San Francisco will say, you know what, if they could do it, we could do it too. So it probably means higher minimum wage as the story continues to unfold for the next few years. Yeah, I guess we'll see if that jobs killer narrative uh, really unfolds or not with the higher minimum wages. Yep. Uh, auto buying, you know, you've been talking for a long time about how our, our fleet of cars is so old in this yep. country, I think averaging over seven years. People are finally buying cars again, it seems. Yeah, and I just took a uh, look at the BMW i8. Oh, you did that car stunning. $130,000. Yeah, that's a fancy little sports car. So if I were to get that one, I'd probably get it on a seven-year loan. <laughs> or maybe Most an eight-year loan. Yeah, I have those now. It's great. Yeah, and more and more Americans are doing that. 24.8%, almost 25% of all Americans are going with six- and seven-year loans. It's not the worst thing to do in the world because interest rates are so incredibly low. It's bad in the sense that someone who could really afford monthly payments on a $40,000 car are going out and getting a $60,000 car. But um, the average monthly payment now, $474 a month for your car. Wow. And speaking of which, Terry has a question for Rob. Terry asks, uh, should I buy or lease a car? Some real quick things. You got to get gap insurance. Yes. So at the end of three years, if you wreck it right before you need to turn it back in, the dealer thinks it's worth $15,000. Your insurance thinks it's worth $10,000. So get gap insurance. Do not get cap insurance. You do not ever want to put extra money down on a lease to lower your payment. What you could do is put more security deposit back that you will get back. If you're not going to own it, why? pay more towards it. Um, never get any of the accessories. You know, you want a stripped down bare model. You don't want the iPhone adapter. You don't want the TV. You want, if you can get a bare minimum vehicle, it's going to be your best vehicle to get. Um, as far as owning it or as far as leasing, then if you drive 10 to 15,000 miles a year and you want a new car every four years, absolutely. Um, I would purchase extra miles before like maybe a 16,000 or 17,000 miles a year that you're allowed to put on it. Um, and keep in mind, the car dealership is going to win because they're selling the car twice. They get you for three years, and then right. in three years from now, they already know that they can get you know X amount of dollars as long as you don't you know, put too many miles on it. So they're going to they're win. Yeah, I'm a big leaser, and I find that if I'm way over the mileage, I just buy it off the lease, and they just kind of convert it for me. And then after a year or two, I'm not upside down anymore, and then I can sell it. I know I've paid more in interest over the years, but I find it's a cheaper way to have a, a lower car payment. And bottom line is I have an eight-year-old vehicle that's right. paid off, no monthly payments. You, like you have the monthly payments. I do. Um, and neither one's more right than wrong. So it's, it's again, if you like to hold cars for a long time, I'm more right. If you like to put uh, new cars into action more often, mark. Right. Right, good advice. Thank yep. you, Rob. And if you have a question for Rob, post it on his Facebook fan page, and we'll answer it here on Chrome 4. We'll be right back.